one winter morning tom and his family went to a picnic spot now it was winters anyone would love to have hot coffee hot tea hot beverages now tom's mother she took out a bottle type thing and served them coffee now the coffee was hot now tom started wondering that it was around 1 hour they had reached the picnic spot and still the coffee was so hot in this bottle now what was inside this bottle that was keeping the coffee so hot for such a long time now this bottle it kept the hot liquid hot for a very long time not only this but in summers he noticed that his father was using this bottle to keep cold water because this bottle was keeping cold water cold for a very long time so he asked his mother about it he asked his mother what was this bottle as such that it was keeping a hot liquid hot for a very long time and similarly a cold liquid cold for a very long time well his mother told him that it was a magical flask now this magical flask this was known as thermos flask now it was invented by sir james divar that is why it is also known as divar's flask now how did that the magical flask work that magical flask or thermos flask work well let's first see this thing here you can see we have placed two cups of coffee on this table now this coffee is very hot you can make it out from this steam coming out now after some time the coffee will become cold now why does this happen can you tell me well heat always flows from high temperatures to low temperatures so you can say that the coffee in this cup is very hot so the heat energy from this coffee has to pass where it will pass now the surroundings of this coffee cup is actually having a low temperature then this here we have placed hot coffee inside this cup that is why the temperature inside this is high and the temperature of the surroundings are low and heat energy always flows from high temperature to low temperature so the heat of this coffee will flow from the coffee to the surroundings now this is the reason why after some time the coffee becomes cold now in the same way if something is very cold then what happens heat energy flows from higher temperatures to lower temperatures so the heat energy from the surroundings will flow towards this lower temperature that is this glass so the cold water will turn into warm water after some time so the heat energy from the surroundings that is having a high temperature then this will flow to the cold water and make it warm now in order to maintain the temperature of the liquid that means to keep a hot liquid hot or a cold liquid cold we have to prevent the transfer of heat energy that transfer which was taking place from a region of high temperature to the region of lower temperature we have to prevent this now a thermos flask does this for us now, by doing this this becomes that magical flask about which tom's mother was talking about now heat can be transferred by many ways you know that heat can be transferred by conduction now take a quick recap now conduction is the process by which heat energy is transmitted through collisions between neighboring molecules that is how conduction takes place now heat can also be transferred by convection now what is this convection well convection is the transfer of heat energy by the circulation or movement of the heated parts of the liquid or gas you know that now heat can also be transferred by radiation now what is radiation well radiation is a method of heat transfer that does not rely upon any contact between the heat source and the heated object like the convection or conduction it takes place by simple thermal radiation around itself now a thermos flask is actually what prevents all this type of heat transfers be it conduction convection or radiation a thermos flask needs to prevent all these three types of heat transfers so that a cold liquid remains cold or a hot liquid remains hot see this is the internal structure of this thermos flask here this is a double walled glass vessel 
This means this vessel has two walls and it is made up of thin glass. Now this double wall glass vessel is inside this protective case. This protective case is generally made up of metal. So this metal protective case has this double walled glass vessel inside it and we pour the liquid inside this vessel. Now the interior of this vessel is made up of silver. Now silver is a good reflector of heat. That is why the inner surface of the double walled glass vessel is kept silvery. Now there is a space between these two walls. You can see this. Now this space may contain air. So this air is actually removed and <coughs> a vacuum is created between these two walls. Now to create this vacuum, there is a hole from where the air is taken out and that hole is afterwards sealed, which is called the vacuum seal. So now you can be sure that no air is inside this thin walls and vacuum is created over here. Now the mouth of this thermos flask it is closed by the help of a cork or a stopper. So this thermos flask is sealed from everywhere. We have to just open it and use it. Now this glass vessel rests on a plastic cork inside this metal case. Okay, so this is the place where it rests. This is also known as the shock absorber. Now the double walled glass vessel is made up of thin glass. I told you this. Now glass is a bad conductor of heat. So it does not allow heat to escape through conduction. Now we know that there is vacuum created between the two walls of the glass vessel. Now this vacuum between the two walls of the bottle, what does it do? It prevents heat transfer by conduction and convection both. Now conduction is prevented because the wall is made up of glass and conduction and convection both are prevented because they are vacuum or there is vacuum between the two walls of the glass. Now the outer surface of the wall is brightly polished that is silver. Well brightly polished surfaces they are very they are very poor absorbers of heat. They reflect heat very nicely but they absorb heat very bad. So they are poor absorbers of heat. Now these poor absorbers of heat cannot radiate heat properly. So the silver wall actually prevents heat transfer by radiation. So conduction and convection have already been prevented. The radiation is prevented by this silver wall. Now it reflects back the heat received from inside. We know that they are poor absorbers and good reflectors. So they reflect back the heat received from inside. Now the stopper that is used to close the mouth of this bottle is a tight plastic stopper that prevents air from entering or leaving the flask. Now this stopper does not allow air to enter or leave the flask. So convection of heat is not possible here. So you can see how this is sealed from everywhere and the features of this thermal flask is not allowing conduction, convection or radiation that is not allowing any type of heat transfers, thus keeping hot liquid hot and cold liquid cold. Now look at this picture. This was a house before with doors and windows and one person went, in, went inside this. Now after he went inside, the doors and windows were blocked. They were sealed. Now can the person escape? Well no, without doors and windows, how can that person escape? Now the person cannot escape as well as no one can enter inside this now. So in the same way, as heat cannot go out from the thermos flask, heat cannot enter also into the thermos flask. So heat cannot penetrate into the flask from outside, neither can it leave the flask from inside. So the temperature of the liquid is maintained. We are preventing heat transfers in every way. Heat cannot come in, heat cannot go out and heat transfers are blocked. So now you know that a thermos flask keeps hot objects hot and cold objects cold and it does not allow heat transfer by any of the three ways that heat can travel. That is conduction, convection and radiation. So thermos flask prevents all these heat transfers.